since uh, last October, uh, we have established a company called Learn Movement System. Uh, yep. Happily. And uh, what, in your eyes, what makes the Learn Movement System courses stand out uh, from other continuing education courses? <laughs> where, where we are and what we've been working on for, for so many years is understanding about how movement plays a big role in musculoskeletal disorders. And uh, way, way back in, in 1973, Helen Hislop with her Mary McMillan coined the term pathokinesiology. And th that term really means how movement is impaired by a pathology in a, in a contributing system, like, like what I was interested in, the neurological patient. If you had a stroke or a spinal cord injury or a head injury, your movement's impaired. But what I learned over, over the years, because I got sort of engaged in, again, looking at the musculoskeletal patient, and I had had this background with polio, a lower motor neuron lesion, the upper motor neuron lesion. And, uh, the, the, and the, that made me realize, or it really put it together with my colleagues, who are so wonderful, that movement was a big cause of musculoskeletal problems. So I, I think where we're changing, what the emphasis we're trying to put in place is not treatment for isolated impairments, not treat, not treatment for symptoms as such, uh, but how the treatment for movement, which is really behind causing musculoskeletal problems. I, I keep trying to deliver this message, which I think is like, to me, it was an aha moment that with polio, with stroke and everything, everybody thought of these problems as acute. So you just hurt your back. You, you just hurt your shoulder, that it just did something. And if we got the pain down, strengthened them, the tissues would heal and we could go on our way. So we had to worry just about range of motion and uh, uh, strength. Well, working with a neurological patient, it, it became kind of obvious that that wasn't uh, the, the way you did things with them. But it also, when I started with the musculoskeletal patients, it seemed like training them, looking at how movement impact this. And, and that's the big deal now. Like every other health condition, it starts early and then it progresses over time. So, and that there are signs before there are symptoms. So, so what we've really tried to do is to show how movement and uh, impairments and, and that they're, we call them syndromes on purpose because it's not one little weakness muscle. It's not two little weakness muscles or a loss of range of motion. It's the whole activation pattern. It's, it's the whole complex. So I think that's what, what we're so keen about. And we've also done our best to try to understand the mechanisms behind these adaptations. Uh, that, that go on. So we're looking at how movement is a cause or an exacerbator of particularly musculoskeletal problems. How then if we modify the movement, if, if we cite the impairment in the movement, look at the contributing factors that cause that and change it, then we're, we're on our way to effective intervention. Mm -hmm. And, and I, think, I think that's the big difference is we're not we're not so focused. On, we think the symptoms come from the way movement is occurring. And we're not, in fact, I never understood it when physicians would say, well, I'm going to give them pain pills so that we can send them to physical therapy. It's like, really, you're ruining everything for me because I want them to come in with this pain so that I know how to teach them what causes the pain in the way they move. And how to get out of it by changing the way they move. So uh, I, I wasn't interested in some modality. We, I went through that years ago uh, where you, you were supposed to use a modality to get rid of the symptoms and then they could exercise. Well, we found out early on that if we change the way they move, they could not only exercise, they could move. And of course, that's the big thing is, can, can I get back with my activities of daily living and do all the things I need to do? So I'd say that's what the, 
our our major emphasis is what looking at movement as a cause and i uh, i keep saying this but um uh, i think it it also changes the way physical therapists should function uh, and and being that we hopefully will be someday on the preventive side of things that people will see us so that we can identify the sign that's there identify their structural variations and uh, also what I learned, you know, is it was a, a bit by bit over the way that because when, when we examine somebody, we don't just examine the part that's problematic. We, we do an exam of the whole body because you can't take one joint out of the body and, 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 and only the orthopedic surgeon can do that. Right? One surgeon can do the knee, another surgeon can do the hip, even though it's the same bone. But the knee on one side is affected by the knee on the other side, affected by the hip, the trunk, the foot. And so we're looking at the total body and how it impacts the site that's become painful, because that's all the things that need to be addressed. And consequently, I, I never had this problem of, oh, now that knee's better, but now you developed a pain in this other place while we were trying to get that one knee to work better, which often would come up before. Uh, in in patients, so I'd say that's the big deal is to try to look at how movements impair and identify the impairment, change it, identify the contributing factors. How has the musculotendinous unit changed? How has the joint itself changed? And then also, what are the activation patterns, the motor learning aspects of things? <laughs>